Good morning children. How are you? Did you watch yesterday's video? Now let's quickly recall what we have learned yesterday. Okay? Children, we have learned yesterday that nutrition is basically of two kinds. Autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. Under autotrophic nutrition, we have the, all, the, all the green plants as example. And then we have the heterotrophic nutrition. Under heterotrophic nutrition, we have the parasitic nutrition. See here you can see dodder. It is a parasitic plant. You can see the yellow strings like structure entangled to the green plant. It is a parasite. Next you have another parasite. The dwarf mistletoe. The dwarf mistletoe. See you can see it, this yellow color tree or plant growing on some other tree. Okay. Next you have the symbiotic nutrition. In under symbiotic nutrition you have lichens. Lichen is a combination of algae and fungi. Okay. Next you have in symbiotic nutrition you have the rhizobium bacteria living in the root nodules of leguminous plants. See here you can see all these are leguminous plant I mean legumes and uh, how, can, how do you know which is a legume see legumes have this kind of a fruit this kind of a fruit all these are legumes and all legumes have this kind of a fruit and in the root nodules of the leguminous plants there lives a bacteria called rhizobium you can see the uh, root nodules here the round round ball like structures they are root nodules and there lives rhizobium it depends on the plant for shelter and the plant gives food i'm sorry the plant gives shelter the bacteria provides nitrogen to the plant next you have saprophytic nutrition under saprophytic nutrition you have this fungi which grows on bread it's called bread mound or it's also called rhizopus and another example for saprophytic nutrition is mushroom see mushroom is also a fungi it's non-green depends on dead organic matter next we come to the last kind of nutrition that is the insectivorous nutrition see you can see what is this biggest flower in the world rafflesia it catches insects for its nitrogen requirement next you have the venus flytrap so you can see a fly there house fly in the trap it catches insects for nitrogen next you have the picture plant see the you can see these pictures i mean picture not picture it's picture see this uh, plant also traps insects for its nitrogen requirement okay Today we learn about photosynthesis. Now you might have all learned about photosynthesis in your 6th standard. But in 7th standard we learn about photosynthesis in detail. Okay. Now you might be wondering what, the, what is the meaning of photosynthesis. Photo, the word photo means light. Photo means light. And synthesis means putting together. Photosynthesis is a process where the green plants put together all the inorganic matter like carbon dioxide and water with the help of sunlight and they prepare organic food. So photosynthesis is a process where green plants prepare their own food. Okay. Now what are the basic things required for photosynthesis? In photosynthesis we require four things carbon dioxide water chlorophyll and sunlight 
Now let us learn about each one in detail. First one, carbon dioxide. Now from where does the plant get carbon dioxide? It has to get absorbed from the air. Now the plants absorb carbon dioxide from the air through tiny tiny holes present on the leaves called stomata. These tiny pores are called stomata. So these are the openings. Through these openings the plant absorbs carbon dioxide from the air. Now let's move on to the second one that is water. Now the plant absorbs water from the soil. Not only water but it also absorbs minerals. Now the third one is chlorophyll. Now you all know chlorophyll is a green matter present in tiny structures called chloroplasts which are present inside the cells. Especially the green leaves have more chloroplasts in their cells. So this chlorophyll helps in trapping the solar energy. Now the last one is sunlight. Now sunlight is very very essential for photosynthesis. Now apart from all these four things you also need suitable temperature. For the process of photosynthesis a suitable temperature is required. It should neither be too hot or it should not it should be too cold. Uh, optimum temperature is required for photosynthesis. Now let's get into the equation of photosynthesis. So the green plants use carbon dioxide from the air, water from the soil and in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll they prepare food material. So this food you can write it as C6H12O6. This is nothing but glucose. C6H12O6 is glucose and not only this now another product also is released during photosynthesis that is oxygen now the photosynthesis is a process of preparing food this is the food that the plant has prepared and the byproduct additionally you get another product that's called the byproduct the byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen so during the process of photosynthesis Oxygen is also released into the air. Now what happens to this food? This food, it, uh, it is stored in various parts of the plant. For example, a carrot stores in its root. A sugar cane stores the food in its stem. And a cabbage stores in its leaves. Okay, so the plant, various plants store food in various parts. So this is all about photosynthesis. Now let's recapitulate what we have learned. In today's session we have learned photosynthesis and what the, requ the required things for photosynthesis. Basically we need carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll. And we also have learned the equation for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. Food is prepared and oxygen is released. That's all for now children. But I hope you will learn all the answers related to the topic. Bye bye. Have a nice day.